guess what? What? It's Witter Shins again. Witter Shins!
but it's done to you and me Democracy is not for me Adolescence on Wittershins. And then we heard uh, we heard Susie and the Banshees and Blood Ceremony doing Witchwood. I'm liking that band more and more. Mm-hmm. We're going to be hearing more and more of that band. What's Marta loves that like? band. What's, What's not, not to like? like? What's not to like? Wittershins. Uh, radio for your spiritual side. A twisted approach to left hand path. Oh, so twisted. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we, we, we. Some days more than others. Some days more than others. And, you know, we talk about, you know, politics and things going on in the world sometimes um and then then we step into the spiritual sometimes world sometimes it happens right in our backyard it happens right in our it backyard is the news but then we you know we, we we step into the spiritual side you know in the or in the magical community it's it's twisted paths That's right, staggering by our backyard back, back and like, forth you know kind of a loose definition yeah but well our backyard i mean paganism yeah as opposed to yeah the world at large. Well, in our physical backyard tonight, you know, might hear more traffic noise, maybe more horns honking in the background because uh, uh, Penny, Marshall. Penny Marshall passed away today. Um, and, you know, rest in peace. You know, a lot, nothing but good good memories. And today, you know, I found out how many movies she directed and I loved all those movies. So I had no idea um, how, I, how much I'd miss her and how close she lived to us. She was right here behind us, I guess. And, um, Anytime somebody famous in this town dies, uh, people flock to their star. It traffic for us. Yeah, down on Hollywood Boulevard or on Vine or... What, is there other streets that it's on? No, it's on a bit of Vine and Hollywood Boulevard. Definitely yeah, Hollywood Yeah, it goes to, to La Brea. All the way to La Brea. Uh, on the west... Yeah. I don't know how far south it goes. So it depends on kind of like how A-list they are, you know, how close their star is to our house. Or if, you know, somebody somebody attacks Trump's star, which is not too far from here. Um, you know, it just tends to mess up traffic everywhere. It just takes up one, one little thing in this town to mess up traffic on several other blocks that have nothing to do with that block. Uh, it's complicated. First it's, world it's problems. Yeah, yeah. So you, you and right away, you know, you hear all the horns and shit honking yep. out there. I mean, it is rush hour right now anyways, but it's double rush hour now because somebody famous died in Hollywood. Uh, but rest in peace, Penny. Um, so let's see. So, you know, more and more and more every day. It looks like Trump's probably got to go to jail for something. Prison. I mean, prison. I'm sorry. Thank you. I knew you were going to correct me on that. Um, there's just so much stuff um, now. And every day there's... There's new stuff, and uh, and now his entire foundation, um, they they could get uh, they could they could get subpoenas, um, they they could go to prison he, too. I just saw um, that he agreed to shut it down. Yep, yeah, un- under it's in order to avoid yeah. the subpoenas. Well, it's under the know. supervision of the federal court. They're supervising the dismantling of uh, a charity organization where it's believed he funneled uh, but loads of other money. Um, well, that's uh, what charity yeah. organizations are for yeah, in this yeah. world. And, and, the charity. and took money from. And yeah, yeah. Uh, it was like money laundering well, and remember, money, you know, uh, remember taking. Remember he had that um, life-size painting done that he was going to auction off? Yeah. And nobody bull, Taking wa- the bull by the well, horns? I don't know. Oh, no, that's but dodgeball. Let, let me finish. Okay, let go. Me finish. <laughs> so he auctioned, he put that up for auction, yeah. but nobody wanted it. <laughs> so he made his charity pay for yes. the painting. Yes. And, and somehow that reinforces his ego. Yeah. Somehow that's Even okay. Even nobody wanted yeah, it. Yeah, nobody really wanted it. And But as long as he can make it look like somebody wanted it, then he's okay. Uh, it's a very, very I don't fragile know. I think it's common president. knowledge that nobody wanted it and that his, he made his foundation pay for it. Yeah. I, I don't even know what he thinks or how he yeah. feels or I don't know. But, but somehow that scenario made him okay with it. You know, that he was I don't able know if to he's okay with buy it, it. himself. He he's probably, you know, he's probably. Choice. I'm sure he's really butt hurt behind the scenes. Yeah. You know, with it, um, but uh, the delusion is strong with this one. Um, but then, um, and then uh, now his, I believe it's his inauguration committee. Um, they all seem like um, they could very well be uh, be be prosecuted, uh, taken to prison, and. I didn't realize, you know, I thought it was great. You know, I love seeing the downfall of this piece of shit uh, that's, that's destroyed America, that's destroyed democracy, um, that was clearly put in place uh, through crook, 
hook or by crook by the Russian government. Uh, after all my years of, you know, hating the Russians and marrying a Russian, and then they finally got us. They finally fucking fucked us. And bravo, bravo to Shay. Well done, Putin, you fuckhead. Uh, worst blow to America and democracy I've ever seen levied, and it was all levied um, well, by they, the Russians. They started, don't shoot. The, the Russians started uh, uh, social justice movements. Uh, yeah, stop, don't, or don't shoot me, I think it was the organization was called. Shoot. Yeah, don't shoot. The organization, don't shoot. All the protests of don't shoot actually were started by the Russians in Russia. They, they, they. All the, um, you know, anti law enforcement targeting people of color and the protests surrounding that, a lot of those organizations were started by the Russians. They, they built upon our racial problems in this country and inflamed them because they're still supporting Trump. That's one of the things that came out that, um, this week is that, that all of their efforts have still been supporting Trump. So somehow, Americans tearing each other apart, fighting in the streets, clashing in the streets. Somehow this is good for Trump and it's good for Russia. It's good for both of those two people. Now, I'm quite frankly, what's good for Russia, um, anything, anybody else that's good for is, is my enemy. Um, so Trump is the true enemy of the people. Um, he was placed there by the true enemy of our people. Um, and it's looking like more and more there may be some justice out there. And just, you know, and I always thought, and I, most of my friends thought, you know, similar things. Like, God, you know, fuck things. You know, if we get, a, get rid of this doofus that can't accomplish fucking anything, this, this fucking cartoon fucking character. We get a guy like Pence, who's cool and calculated and knows the political game and is a homophobe from fucking hell. And, you know, I, I worry about a lot of my friends, um, a, a lot of my friends and the different sub-factions of friends, all the different groups that would suffer from, from Pence as president. Uh, I don't know. You know, those same groups kind of suffer under Trump, but he's just so fucking stupid he can't accomplish half the shit. He's still trying to build his fucking wall. Uh, I think Pence could get shit done. I think he knows the game. He's been around a while. Part of Trump's problem is he's not a politician. He doesn't know the political game. He doesn't know how to get anything done. I, I was more scared of Pence um, than Trump in a way. But but then my lovely wife informed me <laughs> if Pence gets impeached and the, the Speaker of the House is the Democrat, which looks like it's going to be Nancy Pelosi. Well, it has to happen after the New Year. Yeah, it has to happen after the New Year. And it's, you know not going to happen before that. Nobody's going to make that mistake that wants to make this thing happen. Um, yeah, unless, a, unless, <laughs> unless a bold strategy by the Republicans before they leave power is to impeach Donald Trump really quickly so Pence will get into power. Uh, it would be a bold strategy, Cotton. But I don't know. Maybe they could pull that I don't know. Out. There's a short amount of time That's before really their pushy. Christmas break and the government, government might get shut down uh, tomorrow? Next day, uh, this week, I thought it might have been. Don't remember. I don't know, because Trump's trying to shut down the government, you know, whining and bitching about his border wall. Because um, he wants to build a wall. I don't know if you know. He wants to build a wall um, where most of the real problems we have south of the border come through tunnel. And like I keep posting today, El Chapo, the guy that I, I think actually had a, a, a money out on Trump's head at one point at the time before he was president. Um, El Chapo had an actual railroad train. I don't know how big the train was, but he had trains running under the fucking border. Um, just, just yesterday, Israel found these extremely advanced tunnels straight under their border. I'm looking at the, the pictures are showing the border. I'm going, wow, that's a really nice fucking border wall they have right there. That's like exactly what Trump wants to buy. Maybe because maybe he's in coots with Israel, he's going to hire their, their workers to come over and build a wall just like that. But... They're going right under it. And, and the Israelis, at least, they had um, uh, some sort of sensor equipment in the dirt, uh, sonar or something like that, and caught the oh, vibrations. Yeah. And, and so they found the tunnel, but the tunnel, tunnel was elaborate, had like ventilation systems, electricity. You could like charge your phone along the way. Uh, uh, fucking <laughs> Wi Fi. <laughs> I don't fucking know. But it was, you know, really elaborate. But, you know, their wall was nice and useless and there's a reason the Chinese stopped building walls thousands of years ago uh, they don't work once people learn tunnels or once they learn to fly at any rate um, 
But then, yeah, so my dear, dear wife informed me that, that then, you know, in that scenario, we'd get Nancy Pelosi, the Democrat, well, would, so would the, be president. The Speaker of the, speaker the House, House is next in line. line. Yeah. And, well, how the fucking Louia. I'm not even going to think about that. I'm just going to let that go. And you'd let it go, too. Don't think about it anymore. Let it go. Let it you go. know how popular that um, burnt orange coat is going to get if she becomes president? Oh, my president? God. The, the power coat. Well, I, I yeah. think they're already reissuing it. They are. The next day or something, they were yeah. doing that in several colors. Yes. But I think the burnt orange, you need the burnt orange. just like that. That made it. You know, it really co- pops. Color. Yeah. Color is, you know, psych- psychology, <laughs> man. Color does shit to you. And, you know, red does something to you, but burnt orange, it's, you know, it's fire. It's more fiery than red. Yeah. Red's leaning into another element of fire. Yeah. Um, but at any rate, so, so we got that kind of stuff going on for our Christmas. While, while, uh, while our president um, says he's going to be proud to shut down the government and probably you know, make... Christ- and that he will take the blame. And he'll take the blame for making Christmas miserable for you know millions of, of federal employees, I guess. Uh, I don't know how much of the government's affected by the government shutdown, but he's he's trying to throw a tantrum right before Christmas. Well, apparently, um, to get his border his, wall. If he shuts it down, um, um, among other people, one thing I read last night was that his Secret Service team has to work for free because uh, they're going to be. It said they'll be made to do it anyway. I don't know what, uh, what tactics they use to force these people, but all the guards and the you know, like I said, the Secret Service, all those people. They're not going to get paid. Wow. And they just have to live off their savings or take loans out. Wow. So I'm with sure no they're going to be stoked. After the fact. I don't, I don't know. know. Maybe there is, but I, I didn't read that. I, I bet there is. <laughs> uh, so everybody's going to try really hard to protect them. Yeah. But, you know, it's, there's, it's desperation moves um, because... Um, in just a couple weeks here, um, his power will be limited and... You know, praise all of your gods and, and my gods um, that that's going to happen. Is this this madness has to, if, if not stop, at least has to be slowed down somewhere. Um, this this Russian hit job on the United States of America um, has to be combat, com- combated from somewhere, and clearly uh, the Republican Party is not going to do it. Um, they see all the same things that we do. I'm sure they don't just watch Fox News and don't just watch Breitbart. Um, and I'm not saying that the entire GOP are um, unintelligent rednecks and, and, and fascists and, and, and clans members. Just, just pretty much the, 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 the southern ones. <laughs> I'll say that about the southern ones. But yes, they are supported by them and they're accepting that to maintain power. And you just, you have no honor later, and, and history will judge you, and history will not judge you well later, um, based on, you know, the physical evidence before us all. Um, and, and the present will not judge you well either, as shown by what happened in the House. Um, that was a, a, an answer to what's going on. People want to, even people that, that may agree with it, you know, what wanted to slow down it's it's gone way too psycho way too far and if we don't s- at least slow it down it's gonna gonna be have gone way too far uh bef- farther than we can turn it around and we will all burn at the stake together brothers and sisters side by side all of these factions that i see uh the right hates um they, they want to do all that to us and and really I don't think it's a far cry to push their religious agenda to do that after what they've already found. You know, when you let somebody push, you know, their religious agenda and take away your rights, well, they don't stop. You know, they don't back down. It's like the story of, with the turkey. You know, that we've got to get back our turkey when they first take the turkey because if not, they get froggy and they think, well, if i got to take away the turkey, I might as well you know, t- take away his daughter's virginity. Oh, I might as well take, you know, their, all of their livestock. I might as well, you know, fucking st- break into their house and steal their money on on and down. Um, you know, each thing leads to them thinking, well, if, you know, if I got away with that, I might as well get away with more. You know, people that are that way, well, they don't just stop. They, you know, they tend to be greedy and want to take as much as they can. So if they can take one thing from you, they're going to take two. And if they can take two, they're going to take three. And um, we've let them take so much um, from us and... and 
and uh, for them to you know, be able to pass laws in this country and policies in this country where they're allowed to uh, discriminate against a, a, a group of people in this country based on their, their sexuality uh, and claim that it's their religious rights. It's, it's, that you're trampling on their religious rights if you don't let them be a bigot. Uh, that happened. It keep and, and and the waves from that keep happening. More laws and policies all across the country keep being born off of that fucking thing. You know, all the way back to where you know we let some bitch not make a fucking cake for a gay couple. Uh, it re, it resounds out into our universe and becomes worse and worse and worse. And uh, if we let them do that, okay, you know, uh, you can go through the Bible. And figure out um, all of the different pe- people and groups that that they could twist the words of the Bible into being a justification for them to hate. And then they get a claim that their religious right to hate them, their religious, religious right to persecute them. Oh, it's a dark times, man. And they're on a very fucking slippery slope. Uh, and I guess that's what's happening in the, out in that world. I guess when we come back, we'll talk a little bit about our fucked up world here in our various spiritualities and all the crap that goes on here. I don't know if it's worse or better than some of the crap that goes out there, or a microcosm or a macrocosm or what well, the fuck it is. Well, it's the same line. <laughs> the thing is, it's the same line of thinking. Yeah. Yes. Just like the distorting of the truth and all that crap. It's what goes on in our little world is the same thing, the same tactics, the yeah. same line of thinking that goes mm-hmm. on out there. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. So, a microcosm. That would be the macrocosm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Makes sense. All right. I want to hear some more from uh, Blood Ceremony. I think you do too. Yes. Wittershins. We'll be back. Wittershins.
Religion, American Jesus, and again, and again, blood ceremony with yeah. Into the Coven, one of our favorites. Now you can check out both of these bands on uh, iTunes and download them like uh, like I did. Um, if, if it's on the mobile broadcast, I got them from iTunes because I don't know any other way to put music into the Spreaker uh, app. So you know, check them out on iTunes. Say we sent sent you, and uh, you know. Maybe they won't, you know, sue us for using their music. Welcome to Wittershins. Wittershins. <laughs> so, back yeah. in our world, um, God, I guess it was two two or three shows back. Uh, we had Utu on. Yeah. But, but a couple shows again. Uh, Which Doctor Utu was on? And uh, uh, if you don't know about it, you know, later you can go listen to that show. And then listen to this show again, you know, back to back, you know, spend like, you know, four, eight hours with us, whatever you want to do. Um, and um, then, then you'd be all caught, caught up to date on, you know, the drama and crossing over into a couple different magical communities. This one, um, all stemming from an incident at Pantheacon, uh, one of the larger gatherings of uh, pantheists and pagans and witches and stuff on the West Coast. Uh, it happens President's Day weekend every year. Yeah, so it wasn't something that happened at Pantheon. Yeah. It was something behind the scenes. Behind the scenes at Pantheon. Because that you know? Pantheon hasn't, <clears throat> excuse me, hasn't happened yet. Yeah. So, uh, which Dr. Utu got deplatformed. And we've heard that word of, for the last several shows. We just talked about Max uh, Dashu in the last show, and we heard deplatformed again. We keep he- hearing at these, but... Well, when it first came to, to our ears here on Wittershins, first time we'd, we'd used the word deplatform was when we were talking about Witch Dr. Utu. And um, he was deplatformed uh, from Pantheacon because some random person accused him of cultural appropriation. <laughs> and, you know, go please listen to that show because I don't want to explain all that and how much bullshit that is. But it is uh, 
a fervor that has gone on um, on and on and on for weeks all because which Dr. Utu uh, has a book uh, you know conjuring the spirits of the Underground Railroad and uh, he has white skin and no other reason but throughout this entire thing uh, when people would get challenged on uh, uh, their charges on which Dr. Utu's cultural appropriation um, what I saw is people would just switch charges <laughs> and they, they accused him of uh, being a transphobe uh, and, and, a, and a homophobe and um, all kinds of things and no no evidence no no reason no logic um, no incidences or no incidents that ever happened um, regarding that um, they kind of switched charges and, and I found that you know that part kind of suspicious too but at the time that this thing happened, it all happened like a blanket attack. And the announcement was made that which Dr. Utu and um, Max Dashu um, were deplatformed. There was uh, several veiled allegations or, or insinuations made about, about Max Dashu. Uh, and then a sentence later, Utu's in there and kind of a veiled insinuation that he's dangerous or that people were concerned for their safety. Uh, yeah, people were concerned for their safety uh, if he came. Uh, you know, insinuating that he's dangerous. That's, that's pretty much, there's, a, there's no other way to describe that. Um, and it kind of all got lumped together and, and uh, in the... In the chaos that is the internet and all the crap that goes on, you know, every time somebody reposts a thing or or retranslates their version of the post to a thing, it's like that old game of telephone. It gets less and less factual every time you hear it until um, just today I heard of uh, people accusing witch doctor Utu of uh, being a transphobe. And Isn't there some homophobia in there? Too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I already kind of talked oh, about okay. that. But but today, I, I was just talking about how you know people keep sharing these things and talking about these things without getting any information. They lose details every time to where it's come down. Like when, when the announcement first came out, it was which Doctor Utu and Max Dashu all in the same paragraph, uh -huh. and not really the only really. Uh, uh, insinuation they made about which Dr. Utu in that paragraph was that he was dangerous or that people didn't feel safe with him there. After saying, you know, why they didn't feel safe about Max Dashu, and I, it's my belief that some people, um, by by design or by 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 their own fault, uh, have, have conflated those issues and you know put those those two posts together to where now people are saying that which Dr. Utu is uh, transphobe even though he's never said anything like that and nobody, you know, nobody can come up with it. Nobody came up with anything when, when they were challenged, you know, find out why, why they call him a homophobe, uh, especially with all those pictures of him hugging all those gay guys on his, on it's his, like on his Facebook bad, it's page. It's like a bad game <laughs> of telephone. <laughs> exactly. You, you're so cute. They, they heard that. I just oh, described it exactly <laughs> like that. We and never you, even discussed <laughs> this before the show. <laughs> You came in, and yeah, that's exactly how how I said it. It's like each time somebody re-comments or reposts about this thing, yeah. it loses a detail until the, we've just gotten like, uh, now Utu's Max Dashu. <laughs> you know, he's not even, he, he can't even be persecuted about the stuff he was being persecuted about. Now he's being persecuted about other people's persecution yeah. and fucking, you know, uh, uh, he's... He, He's got a spine. <laughs> it's it's got to be hard to deal with, you know, having other people's shit lumped onto you like that. It's even worse. I mean, because the other shit wasn't even his shit either. <laughs> and now the other other person's shit that isn't her shit either is now being thrown on Utu and then the homophobe thing. And, and um, But after our, um, our interview with Utu, which, you know, had its problems and we eventually had to do it old school, but we got it done. Um... He started, he, he, 
I, I won't say he started receiving death threats, but to my knowledge, he received a death threat. A phone call, death threat, uh, was made really hard to trace. Uh, robocall, like one of those one of those drop phone apps, probably or something out there, where it's really hard to trace. Um, but uh, as he stated, the, the only people that would have his phone number are people um, from festivals where he goes. And he's been Pantheacon many times before this happened. Uh, most people have been to Pantheacon many times before this happened to them. Um, and, you know, he never came out and said anything. But I always figured, you know, since this was the thing in the public light, and this was the thing everybody was talking about, and this thing was causing chaos over on Pantheacon's pages and everybody involved in Pantheacon's pages, and on Uchi's pages and Christian Day's pages and everything, that the death threat probably was in relation to the Pantheacon incident. Now, granted, I do not have re... I, wait, wait, hold on. I do not have evidence, but I have reason and logic leading me to that conclusion. The only thing I'm lacking there is direct evidence. But reason and logic would lead me to that conclusion. Call it circumstantial evidence. Call it whatever you want to call it. Uh, but that's where I'd have to go to there. I would have to think that the death threat made to Utu Witch Doctor's phone would have been related to the Pantheacon issue. And I don't know what was said there, but I knew, know there was also some sort of a threat made on his mother. These are the social justice warriors who are in fear for their lives of going to Pantheacon with some evil menace like Utu Witch Doctor or Max Doshin, any of those people. They're, they're in fear for their lives. They're, they're victims and they suffer greatly. Uh, and people like Utu witch doctor make them scared. These are the people making death threats and threatening somebody's fucking mother. And we haven't even got to now yet. This is weeks ago. Right? This stuff was going on uh, probably when we were talking about Max Doshu. And I may have mentioned it last week. I don't recall. Um, but, you know, the fucking irony in that. You know, the people that are motivating other people into a mob by screaming about their feelings about their safety are the people threatening other people's safety. And I, you know, I'm not saying that all of the social justice warriors made a death threat to which Dr. Utu and, and threatened his mother. But what he all did Somebody involved in that did, and the most likely thing, and I'll say it because nobody else would say it, say Uncle Bert said it, say Michael Carell, that dangerous, evil man, said that, uh, was that Jamie... Morgan. Jamie Morgan, whose name came out on the show when we were talking about Utu Witch Doctor as the person, that or the person behind Pantheacon that orchestrated this attack against Utu. I think Jamie Morgan leaked the information. I have not pulled cards on this. I have not read the the entrails of chickens. But just You're usually right, something though. in my instinct says that the bitch did it. And I'm going to call her that. Because that's some fucked up shit. We'll talk about it a little bit later. A whole bunch of shakeup has happened. Jamie Morgan has either been forced to resign or uh, resign. And being that she's the one that says that she was not forced to resign, I'm going to incline to believe uh, the other people side. People begged her to stay. People begged her to stay. Um, I won't. But she said, I really must go. <laughs> <laughs> I do know how to spell no, harassment. harassment. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, but uh, a woman who, so whose name I first heard when we were interviewing uh, with Dr. Utu, and I, I paused, I said, what was the name? And I made him repeat it um, just so we'd know it. Uh, she comes out having to resign or does resign um, over the Pantheacon thing based on what I will not read her entire drivelous statement, um, but based on what I will read uh, and the lack of apologetic language within the text, I would have to say she was forced to resign or at least 
asked to resign from Pantheacon. Um, and Witch Doctor Utu, who has instincts and magic too, he was the one that first said that, you know, he thinks that's who started this shit. And yes, she's white. And the main, I, I don't even know her name off the top of my head, and I tried to I tried to make notes today. I was going to try and write some of this down, but it's so convoluted that the only way to the, the only way is just to pull it out of the twisting vortex of my mind. <laughs> the, the weird little incidents that happen. There's no way to put this down on paper uh, and have it make any sense. But the one person of color that we know that initiated uh, the first things that led to Utu Witch Doctor being deplatformed. Uh, from Pantheacon was a woman and woman of color. We found one woman of color that was involved in the deplatforming of Utu, and uh, she had had her workshop rejected. And as I, as I recall, I, I saw nothing about it being uh, uh, any African magic, any hoodoo specifically. I'm not sure exactly what she was even teaching, but she happened to be black. And her workshop didn't get approved. And it seems like perhaps uh, she took that to the internet and helped, uh, you know, and gave fuel to a mob that was out there. A mob called the SJWs. A mob. I, I, I thought I thought it was an SJW. I've been an SJW since before SJW was an SJW. Uh, but I ain't that. <laughs> and uh, apparently I'm a moderate. And I, I don't know if I ever said it on the show, but I've been a, I've been a, uh, a militant anarchist revolutionary for a significant portion of my life. And I recognized in you know, logic and reason um, that the job of a person with such a title is never to win. You never want a militant revolutionary anarchist to win the battle, um, but their mere presence on the battlefield makes an extreme position so seem less settle. extreme. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the, the position of the extreme left that I came from was never to win, but to make something else that would have been yeah, considered so you extreme. Settle for something yeah. a little less extreme so you don't get the most extreme. Yes. But the little less extreme thing that you settle to is what everybody wanted in the first place. Exactly. Like, you know, traditional militant anarchist revolutionaries is where we get the image of a, du a person holding one of those little bombs like in Spy vs. Spy. That's where that comes from. Um, they, they were pictured that way because they were doing that. The militant revolutionary anarchists were blowing shit up all over the place. That's what they did. And it's like, well, of course we don't. I, I don't even want that. <laughs> of course we don't want people blowing shit up. So rather than blowing shit up and having this fascist right extreme there's something in the middle that will be settled for us. So I was just, I, I recognized it as my job was a losing battle and I wasn't meant to win. I was just meant to, to portray something too extreme to, to where something that used to be extreme wasn't extreme. And now I, I'm that. Uh, uh, what, what used to be extreme, me, I'm not extreme now. <laughs> no, I'm a, I'm a you're the man oh. now. You're the man. <laughs> I, I'm a militant. I, I'm a moderate militant anarchist revolutionary. <laughs> it's still better than being one of these fucking crazy people. Um, this is a mob, a mob attacking people uh, within our own circles, within our own communities, uh, with no logic, no reason, no evidence. It's a mob. I, I heard this guy that. Uh, uh, just the morning after last show it was on like PBS or something. He was talking about mobs. It's like mobs are where people go to lose their conscience. Um, mobs are where people go to to do things that they 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 would not consciously do, except driven by the mob. And somehow, when they do it in the mob, they take no personal responsibility, feel no guilt for that. Um, it, it frees them up from that. Um, mobs are moved by emotion. Mobs are moved by hate. Mobs are moved by if you don't hate with us, we're gonna emotion at you and call you the, the enemy and until say you that join you him. Make us feel unsafe. You make us feel unsafe. You know we're unsafe. We're unsafe. Uh, they use uh, the 
the SJW mobs of today have at least learned something from their right wing counterparts. Uh, the use of talking points and talking points like, you know, feeling safe, uh, inclusion, uh, acceptance. Uh, these words are used uh, as weapons uh, upon this battlefield um, and were used against uh, Glenn, Glenn Miller. Glenn Turner. Miller? Glenn Turner, I'm sorry. And I, I committed a faux pas last week and said she was a he. So yes. I, sorry about that. So, so Glenn Turner and, uh, you know, the other members of Pantheacon. And I won't, you know, uh, dissuade them of guilt based on their eventual response, but I can see where, you know, they were approached by an angry mob of very scared people, scared of an alleged turf that allegedly assaulted trans people at a march. And in that same breath, which Dr. Utu is mentioned, or at least... You know, the communique that came out of them, it was all in the same breath, it was all in the same day, it was on the same hour that it was posted, uh, in the same paragraph, which Dr. Utu is there. And then now people are, uh, people in that mob, uh, given nothing else, are accusing him of being a transphobe, uh, have accused uh, Hexfest of being a transphobic event, uh, because a transphobe is going I think, uh, was it yes, Yeshi Matthews? They say Yeshia Matthews is a transphobe. I'm still... I haven't done any research on think, that yet. I think it's something um, because she knows Max Dashu, who knows Z Budapest. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, guilt by association or something like that. I don't know what any of these people stand for, um, but... You, you, I just saw something on uh, Pantheacon's page today. Um, and I, think, I don't think it was posted today. It might have been from a day or two ago. But where they, you know, specifically stated that they have not been re-invited to speak. So Max Dashu and Utu Witch Doctor are still off the, the roster, have not been re-invited to speak. And then somebody posted saying, are we going to get any assurances that Max Dashu won't be able to attend as an attendee? It's like, really? Yeah. Really? Trying to ban people from our communities. going to kick your ass? Well, I mean, it's like, it's not like they're a sexual predator. You know, that's the only kind of thing that this has ever happened in our communities about before. Um, I do not think that the majority of the people instigating these things... It's the Russians! I will, I will, I, I will no, but I, I won't actually consider a lot of these people part of our community. Um, I'm a witch, and as such, been a pagan my whole life. Uh, a Polero, a root worker, a whole bunch of shit. Um, I don't think a lot of these people are. Um, if they were, they'd shut the fuck up and go to their altar and fuck some shit up. That's what I've done most of my time in these communities when I saw something going on. Well, right. for a lot of these people, it's just right. a, a social avenue. Exactly. Um, we attract the unwanted. We attract the dejected, uh, the bullied. Um, and that makes sense because the people that you know are witches are freaks to the rest of the world. But not all freaks are witches, not all freaks are pagans, not all freaks are us. And just because somebody's a freak doesn't mean we have to take them into this fold. Um, and left to our own devices, we, we have no um, we have no authority, we have no control in any of these communities. It's all just a fucking free for all. Uh, the best we can do is not ever let every fucking Yahoo into every one of our communities. Uh, tolerance is great. Openness is great. We've been way too tolerant. But, but where do you draw the line? You know, if you I don't know. have Everybody's people got to draw who some you lines, exclude, though. then you're being exclusionary. Yeah. Nobody wants to be exclusionary. I know. That's the whole point I know. is to be inclusive and to include everybody. But then you get people who take that and twist it around and use it to their advantage to exploit other people. And that's what happens in real life, and that's what happens in the pagan world, because it's people. Because people. Yeah. Well, 
and, and what you asked is extremely complicated. And, and the reason it's complicated is because we have no governing bodies in any tradition. No people to sit down and hash this shit out. No ambassadors between, you know, covens and groups and traditions. Oh, my. Uh, nobody has ever accepted an, uh, an authority group over them. And I don't know if we ever would. And I would probably be one of the first people to fight over that. But it's like... We can't organize. There's nothing we can organize. There's nothing we can fix because it's all a big free-for-all uh, that everybody's able to do. Um, so the only thing I can do is hold some things up to standards. And I've always said, you know, before I hex somebody, before I engage in spiritual warfare and magically attack somebody, you know, I have at least those three things, at least uh, reason, logic, and evidence. I have those because if I don't have those, part of me will hold back. You may not be that way. You may not have to do that. Uh, for me, I will feel some tinge of guilt, remorse, compassion. I'm not an evil person. Uh, it's, it takes a lot for me to throw. And, and, and historically, I used to let people fuck me over like two or three times before I do it, but not anymore. Um, but I've gotten better at that. But I, I have to stick to that. Uh, and if I wouldn't hex somebody without those things, I'm not going to attack somebody on the Internet without those things. Um, if, if you say something I strongly disagree with right in front of my face, well, there's my evidence and my le reason and logic have to now work around your evidence and I may attack you for some things that you said. Um, nobody's found anything that Utu witch doctors ever said that was homophobic, uh, that was transphobic. Nobody's ever found anything uh, that Christian Day or anybody associated with Hexfest uh, has done any of those things. Um, uh, nobody's found anything that, that uh, uh, Max Dashu said that was trans uh, there was turf turfyisms uh she nobody's found ever found her to take a turf position or make a turf statement um but yeah here we are um so yeah so let's see so uh we we Probably if I'd have known how this was going to go, I would have figured out our phone problems before and had Utu get, get on the air. But, you know, it, it, this thing this thing might keep going and we might have him on the air uh, soon again. Because uh, today when I was originally writing up the, uh, the intro for the, the promo for the show, uh, the original language was um, Utu Witch Doctor Claims Victory in, in Pantheacon uh, Battle. Then I changed that by adding a question mark <laughs> and some other language underneath it uh, after uh, Utu contacted me. But um, earlier in the week, uh, there had been some... I will not call it an apology. And I'll, I'll find it and read it. I'll, I'll probably have to play a song and then find it and read it. Um, the, the official statement regarding uh, the follow-up of this by Pantheon. Uh, and I won't really call it an apology. Uh, there was a resignation by the woman we mentioned before, the main person involved. Um, she either resigned or was asked to resign or forced to resign or something to that effect. Um, and before I said anything to anybody anywhere on the Internet, I sent a personal message to Utu and asked if he was satisfied with the results uh, of the Pantheon thing. Uh, as, you know, as a person that became an ally with him in this fight, it's it's not up to me to decide. I, I saw a lot of bullshit. I saw a lot of uh, stuff that sounded kind of maybe possibly like an apology, but not really going there. And I hate that. You know, the kind of thing where you say, I'm really sorry if I ever did anything to offend you. After our last communication was me laying out, you offended me by A, B, and C. It's like, no, address A, B, and C, bitch. That's a fucking apology. Now, you know, if I ever did, that's not an apology. 
I apologize for doing this thing that hurts you, that thing that hurts you, and this thing that hurts you. And I should have never done that. And I should learn from my lesson and make strides never to do that again. There's your fucking formula for your fucking apology, Glenn Turner. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You seem like you're almost trying, but you're trying to you're trying to stay on some sort of fence somewhere, and you just can't be. You're either on one side of the fence or the other side of the fence. So I asked you to that, and um, he was satisfied at the time. He was satisfied with that, and wanted to. He, he believed that uh, continuance of this thing was causing collateral damage. Uh, that everybody involved, everybody that came to his defense, was being attacked. It is true. Um, and he didn't want that to go on. And uh, he wanted to accept um, those spoils and walk away and, and leave it alone. Uh, not so much after I posted that. <laughs> so, so it's changed. And uh, it does not seem um, that peace has been declared there. And we'll... Uh, We'll play you something, and I'll get some of the I'll get some of the text that I was talking about. And I won't read them all in their entirety, but enough to uh, at least see the problems there. But uh, so the Panthea Cohen thing uh, involving Utu is still going on, and there's you know several people fighting on several fronts now. People attacking Christian Day all over the place, or place and forming pages uh, just specifically to attack Christian Day um, who did the the, the the evil, evil thing of uh, protecting a friend defending a friend who was unjustly attacked and maligned uh, Christian Day stuck his feet in there and uh, so now he's being he's being attacked he's, he's, in some places he's being attacked more than Utu because people can't find enough Stuff to justify an attack on Utu, but they can find enough stories out there on the internet to well, you know, think they're makes right. Well, a lot of people's knees jerk. Yes. So as soon yes. as his name it gets into the fold, I mean that that's kind of how it was with us in Santa Cruz. It's yeah. like we get involved in something, and people, oh no, these people. So yeah. I totally get Christian. So well, well, well let's let's me. you know I I think we talked about it last time. Um, you know, it's part of the. Ha- Part of the way we got involved in this, I barely knew what was going on here. I knew Utu was somebody that I was going to meet at Hexfest this year, and I wasn't very familiar with his work. And uh, you know, I and so I defended him based on that. I, I just made a post saying it's like I was just looking at his stuff, and I was fascinated at the fact that you know uh, I don't know what that is. I don't know what he's teaching, and I'm fascinated to learn something about this very unique system of magic and. I don't think I really jumped in too much further than that when some dude's Tommy Star Punk, uh, Tommy Star Child, I'll say it now because it's come out. This, I, this Tommy Star Child person who I've really only heard his name from people I mostly didn't like back in Santa Cruz, anyways, uh, mentioned me on his wall. Yeah, he doesn't know you either. Uh, he doesn't know me. He says, Christian Day is getting a say, or Christian Day is saying that I was the one that uh, got Utu Witch Doctor deplatformed Pantheacon, and now Michael Carell's getting involved. I'm like, well, I don't know who this bitch is, but clearly he knows me, and apparently me getting involved is somehow threatening. I'm used to that. I'm fine with that. Um, but I hadn't heard Christian Day say, mention his name. I hadn't heard that at all, and I was totally on those threads about this shit. I was just starting to get interested in this shit. I had not seen that at all. And all of a sudden, I got this Tommy Starchild. And then on Starmy, Tommy Starchild's page, um, I I went there, and I commented on his page. Um, I don't recall ever bringing up your name, whoever you are. <laughs> and I left it at that, and he blocked me. And then I got screenshots from his page after he was blocked, where all of the people in Santa Cruz that I don't like, who I wouldn't have seen their comments anyways because they're all blocked anyways, or they blocked me. Um, I'll talk in all this shit. Oh, Michael Carell, he does that, he does that. So I had none shit. But I was watching to see if Tommy Starchild's name came up again, and if I had logic and reason and evidence to throw him into the pot, I would have. And I hadn't. He's a non-player. 
He's a nobody trying to be a somebody attacking us by attacking a somebody. He's a David. I don't know who Goliath is. Was it was it Utu? Did he attack Utu? I don't even know who he was attacking. Was he attacking Christian? Is Christian Goliath? I'm not saying anything about his weight or anything, but you know, was, was he David and Christian was Goliath? That's the whole reason we know about David is because he attacked Goliath. People do this. They attack the big monster, even if they don't think they're going to win, just to make a name for themselves. Um, was this Tommy Char- Starchild trying to do that? I don't know. Was I Goliath? I don't, who was it? Was there several Goliaths? A bunch of us? I don't know. Charstad. I don't know. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but at any rate, I, I saw his name pop up on somebody's uh, thing. I, hey, hey. I finally got blocked from Orion Foxwood's page by commenting on this thing, too. Because uh, he says I'm bad. Um, after we had him on... Uh, He's never said a word to you. Yeah. Well, after uh, after we had Utu on last time, you know, somebody contacted him and told him what a terrible person I was. And I know right away who I that was. I can't believe you went <laughs> on that show. <laughs> Where we were terrible. To. We were terrible. And we said, did terrible things uh, to Utu. And we're just evil and bad for you know, sticking up for somebody that was attacked when... Friends of his would not do the same. And I never saw a uh, uh, ballsy enough defense from Orion Foxwood for his longtime friend. But I, I'm not fucking playing favorites here either. It's like, I barely knew the man. I saw it was fucking wrong. And I got to know the man once I'd already started defending him. And I defended him more now because I like the guy. And I think it's bullshit. Um, I don't know Max Dashu yet. I'll still defend, you know, what I heard. But I don't know if I defend Max Dashu yet Well, or not, not just what you heard, yeah. what you've seen. What I've seen, you know, all the evidence that I've been able to bring up. But um, just the, these, these fucking mobs within our communities. And then people need reassurance that you won't be allowed to go as an attendee. Like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. Um, not that you would want to go, but yeah. really, people, really. You're going to have to, like, lock your doors super tight at night in case you... Like, tries to break in yeah uh, uh, I remember too much, too much. I remember in one of these one of these posts where somebody would send me screenshots of people that I can't see anymore um, this one person back in Santa Cruz said that I ran my my covens like a cult They're like uh. I would love to see that I giving groups absolute autonomy under my system with no then oversight and no you regulation. Give them too much autonomy <laughs> so they feel emboldened to turn against you exactly. and make them all the shit. Exactly. That's the crux of the problem exactly. is that you do give them autonomy yeah. and it turns around to bite you in the ass. Yes, it does. But, <clears throat> but to, I'm not but, saying you shouldn't, but, no, but I know. that's what it's all about. Yeah. I, I mean, I was. I, I'm, I'm always an anarchist. Uh, but I never wanted to rule these groups, so I would give them absolute auto- autonomy. We had uh, we had one of our covens, you know, run by Trump supporting bikers, and, and the other one was also <laughs> run by a Trump supporter, yeah. non biker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, <laughs> and one of the reasons we we let them coven off is because covens have absolute autonomy, and we don't have to do with their shit anymore. <laughs> so, yeah. so I I don't know any cult. Uh, it runs like that. So it's funny. I, I don't need to defend myself about that, but I, I, I found it humorous hearing that kind of stuff. Um, but um, th- then, you know, to say, you know, to now say that Hexfest is a transphobic event that was put out. It's, it's a fucking talking point by the, the alt alt left, man, the fucking lefter than I fucking ever could fucking be. Um, you don't. I. I. I'm old school, man. Magical rapport. You don't fucking lie. If you believe in this shit, you don't base this shit on a fucking lie. If your spirits, your egguns, your gods, your goddesses, your angels, whatever the fuck you have, your ancestors, see that you're full of shit, you're full of shit. And when you speak to them, they're like, yeah, all right. All right, you're my relative and everything, but you're full of shit, dude. They know it. If you believe in all of these invisible presences watching you masturbate in the fucking shower, they know when you fucking lie. They know when you are sleeping. They know when you're awake. They know when you've been bad or good. Just quit 
fucking with people for goodness sake. <laughs> if you believed it. But I think a lot of the people that are in our groups now don't believe it. We're just the only social group that will allow them to be present. And I really don't know how to weed that out. I really don't know how to change that. But we got to recognize it. We ain't all witches. We ain't all pagans. We ain't all root workers. Um, some people just have nobody else to hang out with, man. The, the, the Comic-Con people don't like them anymore. And the furries, you know, stripped them of their fur. Um, and, you know, they, 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 they can't be, you know, do, do live-action role-playing games anymore. They don't like them there anymore because of their fucking attitude. And they fucking end up in the fucking pagans and the witches. It's like all those other groups had a way to kick them out. Uh, we don't. We don't have that. Uh, but the only way we can kick people out is to form a mob and uh, unceremonious, ceremoniously malign somebody and talk about how unsafe we feel um, if they were present. And then, then our enemy is taken away and dealt with for us. That's absolutely like it used to be when somebody would call somebody a witch. You know, we know that most of the people persecuted were probably not witches, or at least witches that weren't very good at their shit, or they wouldn't have let themselves get persecuted. Um, but it was a way to have your enemies taken away. It was a way to have your neighbors taken away. You could take their land. You could take their livestock. You could take everything they own. As the person that turned them in, you got quite a bonus. It was like in World War II, if you had Japanese neighbors, um, some people turned in their Japanese neighbors and got their land. They didn't care that their Japanese neighbors got hauled away to concentration camps and when they came back, they got nothing. Uh, they saw it as a quick land grab and a way to get some shit. Wow. The winter shins. We're going to come back and we're going to give some shit. Thank you very much. Musical break. What's your plan for tomorrow? Are you a leader or will you follow? Are you a fighter or will you cower? It's our time to take back the power. What's your plan for tomorrow? Are you a leader or will you follow? 
on winter shoes. What are you hearing before that? The interrupters? Yes, the interrupters. Um, so before I get too, like, lost, let me go to this uh, kind of wannabe an apology. Uh, came out on the 15th. Was that Saturday? Glenn Turner on the Pantheon website. Update on Pantheon issues. My previous statement about the removal of two present... Uh, presenters from the recent Pantheon schedule was meant to be an explanation of events of that situation. It was not intended to provoke speculation regarding individual people or their work. Pantheon staff are not in the position to make decisions about the authenticity of people's paths or their views. We do not have the resources to do in-depth investigations to confirm or deny all the information brought to us. Our vision is to support an, an environment that is inclusive and supportive of many different types of people who choose to share space at the convention. It was not and has never been Pantheon's intent to create harm to any community members, whether attendees, volunteers, presenters, or potential presenters. Uh, we want to continue the work of creating equitable spaces that consider the needs of the many interesting communities that fall upon the umbrella of paganism. This work is challenging and hard to untangle at times and leaves many opportunities to learn, grow, and do better in the process. Ah, they've made kala with it. <laughs> with that understanding, I acknowledge the layers of harm involved in most of the recent situations related to the convention and the resulting social media conversations that have contributed to speculation of our intentions and exacerbated harm to those who plan to attend. Moving forward is my goal to work towards more supportive systems and avoid potential for similar situations in the future and that keeps the door open for inquiry and restorative practices. My aim is to cultivate systems and resources that support community voice in the process and give us checks and balances when looking to verify information. Pantheon staff continues to work on plans to support spaces for healing in the upcoming convention, and I expect to share some of our plans for this the coming weeks. I hope the continued conversations will add to our ability to engage in useful dialogue around the topics of racism and cultural appropriation, discriminatory practices, gender inclusivity, and the many important areas. Uh, these discussions can expand our environment of the conference and our experience of the spiritual community. So, uh, we'll, we'll turn to Marta. And, uh, uh, did you hear an apology? No. Marta's an expert on these kind of things and, and in getting apologies that are not apologies. I've known her to receive many of them uh, over the years. And, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's not an apology because if it was an apology, yeah. they would have... At least invited them. Uh, they would have replatformed them. Ah. Not that they would have done it, ah. but they would have at least offered to replatform them, and they didn't. Well, although none of them will mention it, I do happen to know that there was prior talk to allowing um, Utu, allowing quote unquote Utu to come back to the conference if he sat on this. He had to sit on some panel where they were going to just, like, berate let him. let people throw tomatoes at him. Yeah, let people throw tomatoes at him or, you know, uh, something, you know, similar to that. Um, uh, and I believe... It helps them heal. Yeah, I believe he told them to fuck off. And in one of the... Uh, earlier this week, one of the people that was uh, an old-time friend of his that, that doesn't like me because his, his bestie doesn't like me... Uh, who had had not said anything about until that happened. You know, probably said a little bit about um, last week or the week before that. Um, he kind of, you know, in his... I'm not even going to read it. I can't anymore anyways because I've been blocked from the page. You sent me but, screenshots. Yeah I've, got, yeah, I've actually got screenshots of the original thing. But uh, he did come out and, and in his 
kind of defense of Utu, he in the middle of the thing kind of throw, throws Utu under the bus and says, you know, Utu's biggest problem is his temper, or words to that extent. And then that that rolled, and then the next person I saw say that is like Utu like went off and maligned people and attacked people and it's like it was again like the game of telephone every time I saw that on a page it was about this crazy response that Utu gave it I don't know of that response I haven't seen of that response the only thing I saw of that response is when they wanted Utu to come sit before this panel and be berated uh, and then he might get to be a presenter at Pantheacon he told him to fuck off well, it's like how I always send psycho emails. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it, So, that's the only temper I saw him have. Uh, what I saw is at the beginning of this week, uh, Utu Witch Doctor, Witch Doctor Utu, uh, had not received an apology, had not received any assurances that these people that maligned and slandered him would do anything to undo what they had done, um, was trying to walk away from it for the good of the community. It would benefit him nowhere. Uh, it's you know probably more beneficial because more people are going to read his book. The more people keep talking about the, the shit. Uh, uh, he tried. Uh, he was doing the, the 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 most you know stand up thing I could see anybody do. I would not have done it. I would not have done it. I would have held out for more. Uh, but it was not my decision to make. Utu was trying to accept that from Pantheacon and the resignation of the person responsible uh, and walk away from all of this and uh, declare peace. Uh, kind of was declaring victory wasn't really a victory um but now um now there's there's other blogs and other people associated with this entire event that are now uh posting that the utu's a transphobe that's the newest thing he, he's a transphobe and um uh, nothing to indicate that um there's nothing there's no evidence of that um this mob has taken over if you say certain words they do damage these certain words in our history were witch. They were communist. They were red. They were anarchist. Uh, they were Jew. Uh, many other things. Uh, mobs have been motiv motivated historically through dehumanizing a person by calling them a name. And then it's okay for the mob to attack them. This is the strategy uh, and the entire strategy of the SJW warriors uh, here at Pantheacon and in many places in our community. And it would behoove us to have the wisdom to know these techniques and call these techniques out when they see them. They are devoid of logic, reason, and evidence. And there is something to be said about the rule of law that we live under in the United States of America, and I'm saying that as an anarchist. Um, the rule of law back in, you know, merry old fucking England and the dark times we came through, it's very different than what we have here. The rule of law we have now also exists to protect um, you and me and can be utilized to protect you and me. We have rights still for a very short amount of time it behooves us um, to assert these rights and to defend these rights because there's nobody in power um, that's going to defend these rights and probably the people in power would be the first people to come and take away these rights um, we need to we don't have cops we got to have common sense we got to have some, some reason we got to slow the fuck down don't let a mob rule you. We gotta pause. We gotta pause, take a breath, take a few minutes, think about it. But all of our magical communities being caught up in Facebook and you know, Twitter and all these things, they, they elicit an, an immediate response. We're, we respond before we can't think, 
or before we can think. And we just keep causing more damage. Um, never going to go anywhere good, man. Never going anywhere good. What you got to say? Clown to the right of me? Joker to the left. <laughs> That's all you got to say? Is Joker to the left? I mean, you got anything to add? Hey, Here I am. You, you, you agree? With you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, <coughs> and a lot of this comes about. Uh, and comes down on now um, a lot of people taking the heat um, you know and I think we talked about this a bit um, I I haven't noticed a, a change in my cash register uh, in the last uh, week or two uh, I haven't seen a change in my gum road presence uh, uh, money's all right uh, it hasn't changed any in the last two weeks, that's for sure. Whatever's coming in. Um, after they started that, uh, that boycott of all of the people presenting at Hexfest, all those people, you know, myself including, of course, being major fucking players that ain't brought down by crap like that. And uh, even now, more than ever, it makes sense to be plugging Hexfest 2019 even here in almost midwinter August right around the corner and I got a feeling I got a feeling tickets gonna sell out man yeah. it'll be a sell out this time Hexfest a weekend of witchery in old New Orleans presented by Brian Kane Christian Day and the witches of New Orleans join in the magic Tales of the magic of the Crescent City of New Orleans stretch back over the centuries. It's an enigmatic place where voodoo, hoodoo, witchcraft, and even Christianity blend at the crossroads of spirituality and power. On August 9th to the 11th, 2019, Brian Kane, Christian Day, and the Witches of New Orleans present Hexfest, a weekend of witchery held in the heart of the historic French Quarter. The conference opens with a riverboat ritual and dinner held on an authentic steamboat on the Mississippi River, followed by two full days of workshops, drumming, and ritual at the Bourbon Orleans Hotel, a venue riddled with a history of hauntings. Hexfest has gathered witches, root workers, voodoo priests, and other magical teachers from around the world and New Orleans, within and without, to offer their time-honored wisdom. Between workshops, attendees will love the magical shopping in our on-site vending hall, where you can purchase powerful ritual tools, sign books, exquisite jewelry, and spellcrafts handmade by true practitioners. Presenters for the 2019 Hexfest hail from across the spectrum of witchcraft and magic. Our presenters include Brian Kane, Christian Day, Dorothy Morrison, Sarita Deste. Deste. I said it right that time. Deste. Yeah. That's what I said. Woohoo. Uh, Fiona Horn, Lady Rhea, Sally Ann Glassman, Hudo Sem Moise, Austin Chippy, Star Cassis, Rosemary Ellen Gilly, Byron Ballard, Christine Steffens, The Dragon Ritual Drummers, Carrie O'Crow, Laura Tempest Zakroff. Mary Grace Faroon, Michael Carell, Woo! Woo! Melissa Mayhem, Patricia Telesco, Star Ravenhawk, Witch Doctor Utu, <coughs> and Yeshe Matthews. Oh, my God. Go to hexfest.com. Get your tickets now. They're going to go fast. And this shit's going to keep happening. And. There'll be less Pantheacon tickets and more Hexfest tickets as time goes on. Because, I don't know, ma'am. They just keep giving us material. Just when we thought we weren't out, they pulled us back in. I didn't think we were out of this. I didn't no. think it was over. No. But, you know, like I, I said on one of my pages, like, I I didn't even know Utu. <laughs> I, I jumped into the fight before I knew him. And then we got to know him. And I just, I, you know, I got... I went with my instincts. I knew I was going to like him. Totally like him. He's a bro now. I don't care if, you know, some people that like him don't like me. I don't give a fuck about that. But some people that 
like him don't like that he might like me but you know that just shows that I'm cooler because I don't have to play that petty shit <laughs> I'm sure those people told him not to be friends with me and not talk to me anymore I never fucking do that shit um, but I'm evil I'm evil dangerous and terrible person and so are so you so you have a lot of common with them too and so are you the Corrells are trouble. Little old me. In Palo, that's what me? they heard, man. The Corrells are trouble. Uh, Stay away from the Corrells. No fair. Yeah, no fair. and here we are, stirring up shit. We're not really stirring up shit. We're just We're talking about it. the shit that's stirred. Yeah, We're it's not it. fake news. We're just talking about the fucking news that, that happens. It's like, I'm sorry if you look ridiculous. We're just talking about what you do. It's like, you know, Trump bitching about the media. They're just talking about what he did. Yeah. Like not, we're not purposely making them look bad. Yeah, we're not. We don't purposely have to do a goddamn thing. <laughs> yes, evil is spelled live backwards. Um, uh, but where was it going with all all of that? But yeah, so I. But I, I was I was saying that uh, before, and I said I think I said it, it was probably Utu's page when he first talked about it, and somebody else talked about it. So, um, I I joined this fight as an ally. Um, it is not my fight to to. To orchestrate, um, it's my place to show up on the given battlefield when called. Um, I do not designate the the terms. I do not designate the spoils of war. I do not designate the victory conditions as an ally. However, I recognize that in war, in these situations, other battles can be brought up. And allies can then be in their own battles against the people that there were. So those are like side battles. <laughs> um, so there are many allies within this thing that are in side battles with these people. And those battles won't go away. But as far as the initial uh, battle that Utu was in, I specifically asked him, are you satisfied with the conditions? And at that time he was um, because he was trying to be the bigger man and walk away from this thing so it didn't continue to cause more damage in the communities. More power to him didn't work out that way. People kept shit up. Um, that is not, I, I don't think that's his, his, his position. He can, he can just you know, post it in the chat room right now. He's in the chat room, um, what his position is. But that was not the case when I talked to him um, this afternoon. Um, this shit's still going on. Um, and now, you know, now it just moves into other realms. Now they're calling him a transphobe. You know, not just a cultural appropriator, but now he's a transphobe. But herein, herein lies the rub. And I'm waiting for the ghetto bird Wait, to fully be gone. Have they called him a turf yet? Uh, well, he can't be a turf really yet, but he's a transphobe, which is would be the closest a man could be to could a could a, tra- could a man well, be a with, turf? With these people, they'll probably. Uh, figure some way yeah. to make a turn. I don't know, man. You're warping my brain, woman. But I, I got to remember what I was going to say. Cause it was important. Oh, therein lies the rub. Um, wait, hold now. Hold on. Yeah, uh, feuds back on. Utu says, LOL. <laughs> okay, so that's brief and to the point. Um, so therein lies the rub because herein was the entire problem. The majority of the people that I saw levying this fight uh, were very white. Uh, and the one person of color uh, that I knew of in the initial fight uh, had a, a pony in the race. You know, she had an axe to grind. She didn't get her workshop approved. And here's this white guy that she wanted to point at. And, you know, I, it seems to me that there's some people out there just didn't like Utu and were just waiting for uh, a chance to have an axe to grind. It's like those people we used to know back in the day when they'd say, Oh, uh, uh, I have concerns. Um, I have concerns means that you're about to say something that's totally inappropriate, none of your fucking business, and you've masked it with this fucking uh, uh, talking point of concerns. Um, Usually that's the way it was. The person that had concerns was about to step out of bounds and say something they had no right to say but they'd cover up with they just have concerns they're just concerned for me so now they're going to step into my fucking business no no i learned about that a long time ago so the thing i was saying about utu and allies that's what i learned when your dear uncle birch michael carell was a uh we didn't have a word for it then, but I guess they call it a social justice warrior. Because we was up in San Francisco doing food, not bombs, and wobbly when shit. these people, half of them were in diapers. Yeah, when half of you were in diapers, 
I was up in the Mission District in San Francisco. And I was, I, I was. You want to talk about social fucking justice? I, I played songs for the protests. I covered the protests for the free radio movement. Um, in my off time, I was serving soup for food, not bombs, organizing unions in the gay district under the IWW. And in the nighttime was putting up pirate radio stations on rooftops in the mission district so that the poor could have access to the airwaves. But it was then that a very wise person came to one of my groups when we were deciding things in one of our meetings, uh, in a group of mostly white kids. They said, you know, you're in this community here in the Mission District and you're doing all these things and you're trying to help these communities and I don't believe that enough of you have done enough to ask the community what it wants. You know, you're providing, you know, soup and, and you're providing, you know, you're doing union organizing and you're putting up pirate radio stations and letting all the community members come to the pirate radio stations. But have anybody given one of the people that live here a pirate radio station for them to talk about what they want to talk about with their friends? That would be true access to the airwaves for the community and by fucking... I gave that person a fucking handshake and a hug. That was, I needed to be called on that shit. My white friends needed to be called on that shit. We weren't even from San Francisco, most of us. There was a small group of San Francisco activists that we were there to help support. Majority of them were not people of color. And we were in a primarily people of color neighborhood, having not asked what they want, what they need. What can we help you with? What do you need help with? Um, I learned this raising children, and I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and tell this fucking story too. Um, I had a daughter, and I read this book about the psychology of raising boys and girls. And psychologically, unconsciously, unbeknownst to us, at least here in America, the study showed that um, when a small girl falls down, the father and the or and or the mother will rush over, pick her up, brush her off, hug her, you know, and, and you know, pick her up. And for some reason, uh, the mothers would do this, but the fathers would not. When a boy falls down, the fathers would go over, you know, and you know, if they're really young, but I think like after a couple years old. The fathers subconsciously go over to the boys, ask them, are you okay? Do you need help? And then reach out a hand for them to give, get up. Um, solidifying the differences between boys and girls in the way that we're raised. So I read that when my daughter was two years old. And from that point on, when my daughter fell down and was crying, I would walk over. I, people would try and rush up, and I would hold them off. Said, so "Hold on." I would reach down and say, "Are you okay? Do you need help?" Before picking them up, hugging them. You still get to pick your kids up and hug them, and make them feel all right. But there was a difference in subconsciously how people were taught to raise boys and girls. We were taught to let boys pick themselves up, and we were taught to pick girls up keeping them in a weakened position where they're not able to, they are able to pick themselves up and they are going to be okay. But subconsciously, that's just how we were brought up. And so when I learned that, I tried to do the opposite. I tried to keep, keep that in mind with my son too. You know, I, st I still do that with my son. It's like, you know, I don't, he doesn't need to be picked up and hugged every time he falls down and skins his fucking knee. I need to ask him what he needs. I need to ask him what I can do for him before I impose what I can do for him on him. Now, there's a kid, so there's sometimes I'm absolutely going to pose. You're going to brush your fucking teeth. You're going to go to the fucking dentist. But, you know, as, as raising them, it's like, you know, I'm, I, I need to ask him. He's a sovereign individual. So we need to think about this whole story that I just ranted about for 15 fucking minutes in the larger context we're dealing with here. We have a bunch of what I've seen white social justice warriors standing up for what they believe people of color want. 
I went to the Pantheacon website today and perused some of the workshops that were approved at Pantheacon, and I had to note that the People of Color workshop was being hosted by a woman of very light skin. It could be argued she has olive skin, but that would not make her, her a more person of color than myself. You know, she could be Italian or Greek or something. Maybe, maybe some his, you know, uh, Latino blood. But you know, slightly not, you know, lily white, but pretty fucking white. Um, not what I would go out of my way to call a person of color anywhere any more than I would call myself a person of color um, and that's what they came up with after all of the the mobs and maligning people and slandering people and driving them out and causing all out wars over the internet we get um, uh, uh, a fake ass apology like that and, and remind me again it was Jamie Morgan Jamie Morgan the one who I believe probably is the person. I, you blame me for it. Come sue me. I, I Uncle Birch, I, Michael Carell, think you're the most, most likely person to have leaked Utu Witch Doctor's phone number to the people that, that made a death threat to him. I'm not saying you did it, but I think you're the most likely person to have done it. It had to have been somebody that he had done business with at one of these workshops, and you had an axe to grind. You seem to be the person spearheading this entire thing, and I will not even waste your time reading her resignation letter from Pantheacom, because a huge chunk of her resignation letter I, I swear she was going to come out and tell me she was an empath every day, but she said you know, part of her problem was she listens too much. She feels too much. And when people came to her telling her about their feelings of fear and, and, and unwelcomeness um, at Pantheacon, she absorbed these feelings within her and felt these feelings. And there was nothing even close to being an apology. And I happen to know from more reliable sources that she was at least asked to resign from Pantheacon over these incidents and never acknowledged that and as a matter of fact in her statement denied that she was asked to resign and said that many people um, begged for her to resign um, and I do believe um, that let's see uh, yes uh, Glenn Turner in her message to Utu as Utu just told us in the chat room and if you're not in the chat room, why? Um, he just said that Glenn Turner uh, said that she could not guarantee that his info was not compromised by the Pantheacon staff. Yeah. And that's the most likely person in the Pantheacon staff um, to do that. So, you know, one of the only people I know of, you know, um, that seemed to have an axe to grind, seemed to be behind this, was the first name that Utu Witch Doctor called out on this show, and that's when I came to know um, the name. Um, so... Yeah, <laughs> it's it's not okay. Um, it's not over. Um, you social justice warriors, you know, you need to you need to maybe ask the people uh, from these groups um, what they want, and if they have a problem with uh, cultural appropriation. If everybody in your your meeting um, that consensus to these things is white, um, you don't get to call foul. Um, you don't get to take on the fight of these other people that you want to be allies with. That's not how allies work, okay? And I'm sorry, one of the things that they've always said about me, including being a terrible person, the Corrells are dangerous and everything, I think of the world in militant, uh, military terms. And that has become more so over time, and absolutely I am guilty of that, and as such I'm teaching classes on that at Hexfest and <laughs> writing a book on those kinds of things. Um, so uh, whatever, it seems to work in the, the realm that I live in because you motherfuckers want to keep having witch wars. So in the realms of military context, the ally does not designate the fight and the ally does not take the initiative on behalf of the alliance. There is the main person, in uh, the main group in the alliance who you are allied with and they tend to call most of the shots. There may be sub-fights later, there may be sub-battles later, there may be enemies 
and allies made on all fronts, but those are sub fights. But in the main battle, um, you white motherfuckers should ask the black people what they fucking want between, before fucking with anybody. You're listening to Winterson's Radio. Uh, we can be found at the Sacred Grove uh, You can find me at youtube.com. Uh, under the name Freak Phil 1309, that's F R E A K P H I L, and the numbers 1309, and the place where I teach the really good shit and some of the stuff, some of the preludes to the stuff that I'm going to be teaching at Hexfest, you can learn at gumroad.com. That's gum like gum on your shoe, road like the road you walk down. Uh, dot com slash witch school, which is of course W I T C H S K E W L. You can email us at the email that we always forget to check, and I haven't checked it in weeks, and I'll go check it soon. Uh, Wittershins Radio at gmail dot com. You can find us on Facebook at at Wittershins Radio. I think that's it. Yeah, I think it's just at Wittershins Radio on our. Facebook page, which we finally made, and we post the shows and things about the shows and stuff that came up about the shows, um, sometimes pictures of us behind the scenes on uh, our Facebook page at Wittersons Radio. <sighs> we got like five minutes, honey. Yeah. Anything to say? No, I think you covered it. God, it feels like I covered it because I'm yeah. fucking out of breath. I think you covered <coughs> it. Well, thank you for joining us. Me. Thank you for joining us. Remember to follow the shows that you like on Spreaker. I haven't said this in a while. You've got to follow, follow, follow. You're there now. Well, you could be on iHeartRadio. You could be on YouTube. You could be on Tumblr. You could be on... I, I've lost track of all the places we're broadcasting. But wherever we're broadcasting, there's probably some follow option. But definitely, it's Spreaker.com uh, slash users slash Wittershins. You can follow, and you get updates. You, you know when we go live on the air. We, we go on typically uh, every Tuesday, 5 p.m. Pacific time, um, but we tend to go on the air whenever the fuck we want, and sometimes you know we might go on late, we might go on early, something might be happening in the world, but we still have a large package that we have yet to utilize at Spreaker, and we it's could go on the, the air. Yes, our package, our package is so massive. We can go on the air three hours a day, unlimited times every day. Okay. If we had no lives, we could be on 24-7 with our large package, honey. Ah, glad we have lives. Thanks for joining us, Wittersons Radio. Bye. Bye.